Yo, what's going on everybody? I'm Fearless and today we're going to be making a crazy UK drill beat for Ron Suno from scratch in Ableton. So if you're ready for this one, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so I don't know if you've noticed this phenomenon or it's just me, but I noticed some of the biggest UK drill songs have just like a vocal choir as like the melody. So I'm like choir or some vocals that are really simple. They may add a few textures or stuff in the background, but it makes up the bulk of the melody. And these are really hard ass songs. So that's the kind of vibes that we're gonna go for. All right, so let's jump right over into Ableton and start putting this melody together. All right, guys, we're gonna go 140 BPM from this one. Uh, that seems to be what most drill beats are set at. So we're gonna do that. And also let's use E minor just so we know what kind of notes that we can play. And then we're just gonna, let's just start messing around on the keyboard and see what we can get. Okay, guys, so this is Fearless in the future doing the editing of the video. And unfortunately, we literally lost all the audio on this dang tutorial, I can't believe it. Over an hour and a half of footage that I wanted to share with you guys, but, but, but. So instead, we are just gonna break down this video in more detail for you so I can show you everything that I did and all the plugins and as a special surprise for you guys, I'm gonna show you all the plugins I use on this Drill 808 because I went crazy with it and made it sound nuts. I wasn't planning on sharing that with anybody, but we're gonna share that for you just because of this. So anyways, guys, let's jump right back into this video and we're gonna break it down step by step. All right, guys, so the first thing we have is the Vox here, and this is what we ended up doing with the melody, but unfortunately, I even freeze and flatten this, but I'm still gonna pull up the plugin and show you how I did it anyways. This is what it sounds like, though. All right, so let's pull up that plugin. I'm gonna show you guys what I did to it. All right, guys, so here's the actual notes I played. Okay, so I ended up playing that on the keyboard. Now let's go ahead and grab this and I'll show you what I did to finish it off. Okay, so we had these notes and we could have just go ahead and duplicate it and it would have been good to go from there. But what we did is we switched up some of these notes right here, these, these two to be particular, and it made it sound a little bit different. So let's do that right now. Yeah, guys, and it's really that easy. We, like I said, we're making a super simple Vox pattern that's just gonna bang, but we're gonna also look at the plugins that made it thicker, and I'm gonna show you what plugin I used, what VST I used to do this as well. Okay, so this plugin is the East West Hollywood Choirs. I got the Diamond Edition, and then I used the uh sound, which is one of the phrases, the vowels from the Women Voice catalog there. All right, let's quickly go through these plugins. So I did a little shaper box because I wanted to duck it a little bit every couple bars there when it was hitting every two bars to be specific. And then I used the Gullfoss just to clean it up a little bit and bring some more umph out of the voice. Next, I actually used an audio effect rack here and all we have is an EQ on it. And the big reason for doing this is I wanted to pan one more to the right and this was already panned to the left by default. So what I did is I kind of panned one to the right and it kind of evened it out there. And as you can see, we're chopping out a little bit of the highs here, but nothing crazy going on. Next, I did throw a little bit of reverb on here. You can see it's a short mix right here and the decay is quite long. And now we do the last EQ here to chop out the lows that are unneeded. And then I have my channel strip EQ right here, which is a UAD plugin but it's just adding some more highs and letting those kind of stand out more in the mix. Last thing I did here is I actually made two different ones with it. One of them has more of the lows in it and one of them has more in the highs. So unfortunately, I can't really show you that because I already freeze and flattened them, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Okay, and then to finish off the melodies, I literally just took this plaid, plaid, this pad sort of sound, and I just used it. I'm holding down one note. It's literally so simple. This is what it's called. It's an Omnisphere, and I literally just held it down. And then that repeats every bar or so. Let's see how long it repeats. So it repeats every four bars. And you can see I just held down the E2 note for there. And now let's listen to them all together. So you can see it just gives it that eerie little extra bit in the background that makes it so much harder in my opinion. Okay, I also used the Gullfoss for this one as well. Chopped out a little bit of lows with the EQ. And then I also put that channel strip EQ on there to bring out some more of the high end and some more of the feel from it as well. And that's literally all we did for the melodies. The only other thing is we put a glue compressor with a side chain to the kick so that the kick would punch through it just a little bit more because it, it did have a lot of reverb and, and stuff going on so that little extra bit helped the kick kind of push forward. 
but we haven't even got to the kick yet. So calm down, calm down, guys. All right, so next we added in the snare. And for these type of drill beats, you probably know, or maybe you don't know, but if you don't know, you don't put the snare on the same spot. We put the first one on the same spot, but then we lag the second one behind a little bit. Check this out. All right, so that's kind of the drill tempo that you do with the snares. It's a little bit different, but not too hard to understand. The hi-hats are a little bit different as well. Instead of going every other, we're gonna put two spaces in between them. And I kind of took some notes out and did a little bit of extra stuff here. You can see they double up here. So that's why I have spaces and they're not going all the way across. So instead of going every other, we're going every triple, every third time. So let's listen to how this hi-hat sounds with it. So super simple pattern, but that's all we were looking for for this beat. Now I had to throw in some of the drill FX sounds that you hear all the time that just make it sound super cool. So here's the first one that I added. And I added in one more FX as well, and you'll see that comes in a little bit later, but let's take a listen. So it's that forward and reverse kind of sound. And actually you can see from the sample, it does exactly that. Guys, I put a little bit of reverb on this one. Nothing too crazy. You can see it was like 20%. Just a little bit of reverb on here. And obviously chopped out the lows. With the hi-hat, I chopped out the lows as well. Also just a little bit of reverb. If with these kind of beats, the reverb helps on a lot of these drum sounds. If you haven't noticed that yet, it can sound really good. So keep that in mind. I also used an effect rack, which is just gonna pan it from left to right. You may have seen me use this before in the past and it does a little micro shift what makes it sound just a tiny bit wider. And on that snare, we're pretty much just chopping out the lows, boosting that part where the snare really crunches. Oh, what's crazy is I use this transient master, which I've never used it before, but I decided to try it out. So we're just boosting the attack on the transient here, 44%. And once again, we're using a little bit of reverb, baby. Let's go. Okay, so the last drum that's not the kicker, the 808, is this snare, the second snare that I put in here. And this is an actually like an interesting sound, to be honest. So it has that more high sound, but you hear this a lot in these kind of beats. So let's take a look at the pattern. It's pretty simple. You can see it comes in a couple times. Eh, let's just listen to it. So it just comes in. It's just like an accent snare that just comes in every so often. All right, let's break down this 808 now. All right, guys, so really important. I always put the glide on. I usually put it above 100 milliseconds, and that's going to be important for when we do any of our glide notes that that's turned on. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And as you can see, I have a very minimal pattern going on. Nothing too crazy. There isn't any super crazy slides. We have like one right here, and then I think we slide right here, and that's pretty much it. But you can see I'm kind of doing this. It sounds like dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's actually listen to this though. So nothing crazy at all. It's pretty much just an 808 pattern with one or two glides in. So yeah, it's really that cool. Okay, and actually this happened by accident, but I put in a second 808 the drill type of 808 sound and I was playing around with it on the keyboard and I accidentally come up with this but it sounded so darn cool that I kept it and I'm literally just playing it in this one spot that's it so take a listen to this and you may be like what's going on it's panning yep it's panning and it's delaying so I'll show you that really quick and then we'll break down the sauce on the other eight. Okay, so I used the same thing that I used on the hi-hat. I did this pan man right here with a little micro shift as well. So that's why it's panning from left to right. Okay, and then I put on replica here, which does the delay. So it delays it from left to right. And I usually put this on ping pong, but since we already had it going left and right from this other plugin, I went ahead and left it on a wide. So that way it was just filling the spectrum with it. And it's just dotted, so it's just, you know, doing a one-fourth delay there. Lastly, I did a little bit of sidechain to the kick, and I did this for both the 808s just in case. You know, we need that kick to really punch through the mix in this beat. All right, so let's break down all the craziness on this 808. But first, I want to show you I switched up the pattern ever so slightly for this second set of 8 bars in the drop here. So as you can see, the difference here right away is that we're doing a glide right off the top. So all I did was put this up an octave to E4, and then we're going right down to E Okay, and then we're hitting that twice, and you can see the pattern's looking the same here. 
we did a downward slide as well here going down to E2. Sounds like a fart, but it still sounds cool in the mix. We did, okay, so this this is the same glide as before. There may be a couple notes placed a little bit differently, but as you can see, it's nothing too drastic. I also did an extra glide right here, but let's listen to this too really quick. <laughs> So absolutely just pretty much the same pattern, but just a little bit different. And that literally makes all the difference, guys. So don't be lazy. Make sure your second 808 is just a little bit different, especially with these kind of beats where there's glides and crazy stuff going on. You don't want them to get bored of the sound and just like get used to it. Now for the sauce on the 808 and just promise between me and you, don't be telling our competitors about this. All right, let's keep this in the community. Cause this shit goes crazy fam so i have a whole audio effect track which i'm actually going to save and use later because this ended up coming really really cool so if you guys have seen any of my mixing tutorials on 808s you may know that i like to use a glue compressor and or a compressor on my 808 for some reason there we go so i use this one which is a uad plugin but feel free to use like ableton's glue compressor they have some really good presets as well, too, that are good for bass. So I would recommend starting with one of those. So that's what we started off with. Then we did a little bit of R bass, and you may have seen me use this on synth basses before, but I just targeted more of a higher end on this 808 right here. And yeah, and just boosted it up a couple of decibels, and it sounded really good. So actually, let's hear the progression of this, too, as we're going. Okay, so this is without any plugins. Okay, and then this is where we turned on the glue compressor. So if you felt that, you may have felt the bass kind of stood out a little bit more, and that's exactly what we were going for. Okay, next is that R bass, which we were just talking about. So let's listen to that. So you can hear it pretty much changed the sound of it. It almost gave it more of a higher lean, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I just came up with that, but I think it sounded cool, so whatever. Yeah, so we did that with the R bass to add a little more body to it in the high end, the mid high, I'd say it's definitely not high. And this is kind of like a little secret here, right here is I use this chorus plugin. Now you can use, I think Ableton has a chorus. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but you can definitely use the Ableton one. But this chorus, I found a cool plugin preset right here. I found this cool preset called String Machine, but it adds just a little bit extra that makes it sound way different. So here's without it and here's with it. So you can tell it just like changed where it was like located. It made it feel a lot different. And this right here is that little extra sauce a little bit that I wanted to share with you guys. I wasn't gonna, but you know, since shit happened, it's, you know, it's whatever. Okay, and then lastly, when we put on that chorus, you may have known it felt like it took away some of the highs. Let's listen to it again so you can see. Without it and with it. To me, it felt like it was taking away some of those highs that we wanted. So I put the decapitator on here, which is just a distortion plugin. We got some of those highs back. And honestly, we boosted it even more. This is without it and with it. Made it sound stupid, man. Almost like a little rattly sound. So that right there is the sauce. And then, yeah, we did the little sidechain thing right here with the kick. Nothing too crazy going on. So that's the sauce for the 808, the drill 808. Don't share it. I'm going to hold you accountable. If you share, I'm going to come find you, fam. I'm literally going to come find you. And it's not going to be good. That's all I can say. Last but not least, we have the crazy kick that just punches through the mix like Godzilla himself. And we're pretty much following the 808, except some of them are off a little bit. You'll see like the second kick, for instance, it's off a little bit, but it gives it kind of a cool feel. And the kick stays the same all the way through. We didn't change that up whatsoever. It was good how it was. Oh, I forgot to mention, we also put a riser really quick right before the drop. All right, so we broke this thing down like no other before. Let's take a look at the arrangement real quick. Let's just play it and we'll talk about it as we're going. So starting off like we usually do with the melody, we're gonna bring the pad in here halfway. And then we're just gonna start with the 808 here and then the hi-hat as well. And then we're gonna go into the drop. If we're ready for our little riser here. Basically, everything's coming in except for that second snare now. Got 
the different 808 and the different snare. All right, so we doubled that up right there. We made like, you know, four times eight, 32 bar drop here. Then we come back in with just the 808 and the melodies, and then we go back into the drop again. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. We broke down way more than I thought we were gonna just because we lost all that data, but I think you guys are gonna get a ton out of this. So I'm glad that you watched this one and shout out to you if you're still watching. But there's one more thing. If you haven't seen the last video, which I'm gonna put right here, you're gonna wanna check that out. We did a virtual beat and I broke this one down in super detail as well. But we also use some different methods that we haven't done yet. It's something new that we're doing for 2022 to upgrade our sound like never before. So definitely check that one out. And I'll be catching you guys again in the next one. Peace out, gang.